So, big day on Wednesday. It is going to be the King's Speech. And, of course, in the King's Speech, this is when the government gets to set out its legislative agenda, and especially what it is going to really achieve in the first 100 days. So we're going to expect, I think, some very, very big things. But most importantly, the one I am really looking forward to, and we already know it's certainly going to be in the King's Speech, is going to be House of Lords reform. That, I think, and as I've talked about before, I think should be a massive, massive goal for all of us who want uh, election reform. You know, getting the House of Lords to be turned into sort of a House of Regional Representatives uh, would be an absolutely fantastic goal to see, to be achieved, and I think it would massively, massively help uh, certainly bring back uh, a lot of people's interest in democracy as well, being sort of elected to this house, um, you know, carrying on maybe many of the current forms of, of what the Lords currently do, uh, and maybe even in some cases expanding, of course, on what the Lords currently do, which is mainly scrutinise, of course, many of the bills that have sort of come through Parliament. Um, and of course, you know, adding stuff that maybe they'd like to see or uh, maybe having a further conversation about some of the stuff or amendments, etc., that were maybe added in the House, etc. And of course, this is where we get back to the whole, you know, game of parliamentary ping pong that we've seen uh, over the years uh, quite a lot uh, from the Lords, because the Lords were, shall we say, hardly, shall we say, very impressed uh, with a couple of the bills that, uh, shall we say, the previous administration had been trying to pass. But there are a lot of interesting things and a couple of things I think are going to be really important in really helping to push forward for a more and better, I think, House of Lords and a really aiming, as we've said before, changing it, I think, to a House of Regional Representation. And I think this would also play very, very well into more of Labour's devolution plans of giving the regional mayors more power. So before we go talking about more about that uh, please do remember to click on the like share and subscribe button and of course down below there are links to my patreon page the one of station link called buy me coffee we can well buy me coffee the youtube thank you button and of course as always you can click the like and share button there's the pony club down below as well and of course let's crack on into today's stuff although i haven't actually got something prepared for you today but there you go um so one of the first first big ones big ones that Labour are talking about is getting rid of the remaining 92 hereditary peers. And remember, these people um, don't get elected. Uh, it isn't the case of, you know, they sort of get put in. This is a period that is effectively handed down to whoever happens to be the firstborn. Remember, it was only very recently that this uh, handing down of the title could be handed down to a daughter if she happened to be the firstborn. So this is something that really, really, really does need to go. Um, these people, I think, have long, long overstayed their, their, their welcome. I don't think there's any place for having a hereditary position in our sort of modern democracy, I, I think they should be just be, you know, gone completely. Now, the big question is, is how uh, do they get gone, shall we say? Um, we could see maybe just a full cull of these 92. Maybe it's just it passes, bang, they're gone. Maybe we see a slow phase out Again, I prefer a full call straight away than a slow phase out. But, you know, you've got to negotiate these types of things. And bear in mind, the reason why we have these 92 hereditary peers in the first place was when Tony Blair tried to get rid of the 19, uh, of the, uh, well, the hereditary peers. Uh, last time we had some uh, House of Lords reform, they were the Lords and specifically the Hereditary peers really pushed back on this, um, and these were like the 92 uh, people managed to survive. In fact, I believe it was the Marquis of Salisbury actually has 
uh, in his land somewhere, the 92 trees planted by these, these survivors as a sort of a thank you for trying to negotiate their survival. So, you know, time to take an axe to them in many cases, I think. But the quicker I think we get rid of them, the better. And like I say, I would far rather these these people go all at once than some sort of phased out transition. But if it is a phased out transition, fair enough. But the other, of course, big one, and this is interesting. So mandatory retirement age. Yes, a mandatory retirement age as soon as they hit 80. So if a lord, as soon as they hit 80, bang, you're gone retirement bye bye um i think this actually helps a big big problem in the house of lords immediately there are far far too many people in the house of lords you've got over what 650 i believe it is lords almost at this point i'm almost sure you've got even maybe maybe even more than that if, if i remember the, that was it um 800, sorry. There's 800 peers in the House of Lords. This is massive. Uh, a massive uh, over, um, you know, bloated institution. So you'd think the small C conservatives would be, you know, really in favor of doing House of Lords reform, but no, apparently not. Um, but no, this would actually, I think, be, be really effective. Really, really effective. For starters, this would get rid of over two. 100 lords so all those 200 lords all over 80 gone the next thing of course as well most of those 200 lords that are already over 80 guess what they're the ones who don't show up as often to you know perform their duties so implementing this law i think would be a fantastic reform for the house of lords itself it would help uh you know shall we say alleviate the clutter <laughs> going on uh in the house of lords ultimately so this would be a, a very very good step forward and of course a lot of those 200 uh are of course tory peers so this would drum very very much so dramatically rebalance the lords certainly in favor uh of labor but as i've said before this is why we need to you know change it to something more democratic it would be a lot 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 more better on that front so that is actually quite nice i think so i kind of do like that we do get that um you know demo that that sort of sweeping away of this but of course what of course do we get about the stuff that gordon brown wrote because you remember when labor in opposition gordon brown wrote a big thing about what he wanted to see um you know in the house of lords so one of the things um, he said would be that the Lords should be implemented for a 15-year term, that you serve 15 years in the Lords and that's it. That would actually, I think, be quite, once again, quite good. Um, but again, I want to see it you know, be a more democratic thing. Uh, but that would actually be... Um, something potentially good to see you know you you serve a 15 year term bang out you're gone uh we'll we'll see i don't think that's going to make it in to be honest the other one would of course be um turning into what he said as a national assembly of nations and regions and this isn't too too dissimilar from of course what nick clegg said back in the day creating an elective body and sort of how this could do. And this comes back to what we were saying at the beginning, how this could sort of feed into Labour's devolution plans. Because how does, let's say we, we make it into, into that and it becomes an elected body, then is this responsible, this, this, this body of regions, is it still solely responsible for looking at stuff from a national point of view? Or does this also start to look at maybe stuff from the devolved assemblies? Maybe look at it looks at stuff from like, the regional mayors what they're doing as well again i think that would get quite honestly a bit too messy and i think there would be a bit too much stuff to do i think more of it should be sort of more focused from those re from those regionals 
so to be sitting in sort of the House of Lords so that they can then examine more of the stuff that goes on in Westminster, I think that would be a far, far better idea. I think it saves a lot of headaches, a lot of arguments. But I think overall, that would be uh, pretty good in, in many ways and respects. So we'll we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. But I think as as House of Lords reform goes, you know, not everything I want. You know, I've said before, I'd far rather the House of Lords become, you know, a democratic institution. Uh, but I think so far from what we've heard, from what we've seen, I think that is a fair enough good step in the right direction. And, you know, eventually, maybe once you've done this, maybe the next step can be full House of Lords reform, turning it into an elected body. So we'll wait and see what happens there. But, hey, steps in the good direction. So, as always, uh, thank you very much for watching, and of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.